Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the crib. Coming to you live from the Shenandoah Conservatory Music Ed Lab. Today, we are going to be teaching you and starting our lesson on beginning music theory. Hello everyone, my name is Amy Hernandez. I am a sophomore at the Shenandoah Conservatory. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Railsbeck and I'm also a sophomore music ed major at Shenandoah. Exactly, today we are going to be teaching you about the basics of the staff. Yay! <laughs> Exciting. All right, so to start off, what is a staff? A staff is where we display musical notation. This is where you'll find your notes, your rhythms, everything you need to know about what you're about to perform. So if we look at this, this is a grand staff. It has two sets of lines here. Uh, there's a top one and a bottom one. And within each of these sets, there's five lines. One, two, three, four, five, and four spaces. Within the grand staff, which you will only use this type of grand staff, you know, if you're playing piano or something that, you know, has two different parts, right? Within these, we have two different clefs. The treble clef or the G clef, and the bass clef or the F clef, right? And now, visually, it's easy to tell which one plays higher. The treble clef plays higher and the bass clef plays lower, right? So if we're thinking in terms of piano, the lower hand is going to be playing, your, your left hand is going to be playing the bass clef and your right hand is going to be playing the treble clef. So just like Anna was saying, there's five lines and, five, and four spaces, five lines and four spaces on the staff, right? So in treble clef, these lines are, I'll write them out, here we go. So we've got E for this, for this first line, G, B, D, and F, right? And the easiest way to remember these kind of things is creating a, an acronym, is creating an acronym for these letters. What I go to is every good boy does fine. It's the easiest way to remember those lines. And then, so we have the spaces, and those spaces spell out F, A, C, E. And now that one's really easy because it's just the word face, right? Cool. So it's a little bit different for the bass clef. In the bass clef, the lines are G, sorry, these are a little slanted, I apologize. V, D, F, and A. The way I remember these, it's a little weird, but it's kind of what I learned in, in school for me. I learned gummy bears don't fly airplanes, which is kind of strange, but you can come up with whatever you want. And then for the spaces, A, C, E, and G. I don't actually have an acronym All for these. All Cows Eat Grass. All Cows Eat Grass. That's a great acronym. Thank you on a rails back. Yeah, so those are the lines in the spaces. And basically, each of these notes plays a pitch, right? And so when you see a note, which would, you know, not look like a letter, it would look like that, you would play that given pitch. So yeah. So there's a connection between these two stabs, right? They kind of look separated. Yeah, and I know all the letters are a little, little bit scrambled, but the way that they connect is through this one line right here. This note right here, is called middle C. Middle C is the middle point between bass clef and treble clef that connects the two. So notice that this letter, that this note is not on any of the lines or the spaces of the staff. That's because it's on a ledger line, which is basically an extension of the staff, right? So if you wanted to place something higher than this A, then you would write a, a ledger line, you know, giving you a C for the next line, right? So if we were to continue, let's just, for example, say in bass clef, right? For the next space, it would be B. The next line, this would be middle C. And then we'd have to draw the ledger line again to give us this D. And then so <laughs> in treble clef, we would be playing these same notes, right? So let's say we were going down because to go down to the bass clef, we would have to lower our pitches. So instead of an E, which would be this bottom line, we're gonna go down one and we're gonna get a D right here, right? And this is exactly like this note, it's just 
obviously it's notated a little bit closer because I was drawing it to the base staff. But, so this would be a D, and then we go down one more ledger line. Sorry, I know it was crooked, but this was, this would be uh, middle C. So it appears at the same place in both, in both clefts. All right, and lastly for these staffs, I'm just gonna show you how to draw it. It's, the, it's, it's pretty easy. So let's start with base clef, because that's the easiest one to do. All you gotta do is you have to find the line where the F is, right? Because I remember I told you that this clef is also called the F clef. So you need to find where this F line is, right? What you gotta do is you draw a little bit of a circle, take that, draw a little arc, and come down. Just a little candy cane-like shape, right? And then, final touches, not too difficult. All you gotta do is draw a circle above and below the F line. Cool, great. And for the treble clef, which is also known as the G clef, we're gonna find the G line. Isn't that crazy? There we go. So we'll teach you both two ways to draw the treble clef. I mean, they're both gonna look the same, it's just wherever you start. You start there, you go up a little bit, you come down, you go up, and you loop back down, and give it a little flick at the bottom. That was a little tall, but that's okay. Cool, and then so the, the other way you can do it is by starting at the bottom. So you do the little loop at the bottom, you go all the way up to the top, come down, and loop around the G. Cool. So feel free to try that on your own. You don't have to, but it, it's good practice to you know be able to do it.